this is the third time I'm recording. But, uh, I just got done with the vinyl, the video where I talked about Led Zeppelin and Queen for way too for an hour. Basically, now what I want to talk about, I'm gonna shift gears and do what I actually wanted to do with this series, which is unload all my baggage, all my emotional trauma. Well, what, trauma with air quotes. It's not. Tra it's just me being a non-functioning social creature, not functioning well in social settings, baggage, but, um, why do I keep looking over here? There's nothing over here for me to look at. Alright, I want to talk about dating. Dating, and, like, just being social in general. It's hard. Being social is hard to do. I should probably change the lighting up a bit, like, make these videos stand out more. Can I turn this on? Yes, okay. Yeah, you probably see that. It's pink now. I wonder if that'll light it up much. Ooh! Ooh, I like that! Ooh! I can see the, like, the screen is fake. What's recording my right now, the video, is the webcam just sitting on my monitor, so I can see my monitor and see what the camera is seeing. So, that's perfect. Also, yes, the camera is not, like, centered perfectly. So, um... Well, I'm, I mean, framed at the right size for a normal YouTube video, so there's, like, these black bars. I don't care. That doesn't matter to me, because you can still see me, so why should it matter? All I need is a camera and a working mic, and you just need to see my face, and that's all I need to do. Anyway, let's see. Being social is hard. I'm not good at it. I struggle. I used to be, it used to be worse than it is now. I've gotten a little better at it. Like now I can like talk to people one on one. I guess I could always do that. But like before, if anyone asked me to do like a talk in front of a bunch of people, I would just die. But now I'm to the point where I could probably like I can like I'll still stress over it, but like I'll still be able to do it. Like, my hands will be all sweaty and clammy when I go to do it, but I won't, like, hyperventilate and die thinking about it now. So, that's a positive, but it's still hard. <laughs> like, uh, talking to girls, that's hard. I don't like that. I've been taking, like, dance classes recently, ballroom dance. Like, I just, my mom wanted me to do more social stuff, so she put me in that. I, I mean, that makes it sound like it was forced. I was okay with it. I partly wanted it, because I, like, I know the stuff I will, like, 100% want to do are not going to lead me anywhere socially. <laughs> Except seminary. That's fun. Uh, <laughs> and church, but that's it. Where was I going with this? I was going to ask a girl on a date. Well, I might in the future. Who knows? Uh, but, like, I finally like progressing to that point. Although I still don't want to. <laughs> like, I'm close to maybe doing it. Can it? Is it capturing me right? Yeah. Okay, I thought it froze. But, um... Problem is it's, like, November now, and there's snow everywhere. And the one plan I actually had just got snowed on and collapsed. So now I have no ideas. Psh, crap. Crap! But yeah, um... What was that? What else was I going to say? One thing I've realized with... I could live in Utah my whole life. The only thing I don't like is the part where... There's, like, Utah's a very traditional, traditionally cultured place. So, one of the, and one of the things from, like, normal tradition is the dude has to, ask, like, dance. Like, the dude has to ask the girl to dance. I don't like that. That's, that's stupid. I don't like that. Because I'm lazy, and I'm already scared enough of people as it is. So as long as that remains a thing, 
I'm going to die alone. Uh, yeah, I will never be able to get married. <laughs> I said I was thinking of asking a girl. I didn't say I was going to. By the time you're watching this, you'll know whether that's true or not, I guess. But, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. The, I don't, I don't like, it, it's hard, it's hard, it's one of the trials of being homeschooled is social life is not, basically nothing, I had every opportunity, it's not even homeschooled's fault, it's the internet's fault, I entirely blame the internet for why I'm the way I am, like why I'm such a nerd, and why I can't talk to people. So, the song Welcome to the Internet by Bo Burnham really, really hits hard for me. Like, because it's like, yes, this is exactly what happened to me. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, I was kind of screwed over from the start because my parents didn't try hard enough to keep me away from it. That sounds mean. I don't want to blame them for anything, because, again, it was all my fault. Because I was uh, used to be a stupid kid addicted to the internet and, like, YouTube and video games. That's all I wanted to do. But now the only time I, now the only time I play video games is, like, when me and my brother record videos for the Game Spa, which, by the time you're watching this, may or may not exist yet. Because I still haven't posted any videos, like, we finished, like, half the... We want to do it in, like, seasons, kinda. Uh, so, like, we'll record all of the videos for one season, and then I'll po edit them and post them all, and schedule them all to come out, and then while they're posting, we can lounge around, take our time recording the next season, and then I can schedule all those, like, have, like, a month-long break between each season or something like that. Really give us like, time to dawdle with it. Someone stomping down the stairs? I don't think they're coming in. Anyway, that'd be... I didn't even think of that. Like, I didn't want to edit these, but if someone walks in, that's gonna be really awkward. Uh, <laughs> crap. Dude, I got chocolate chips. I can't eat chocolate chips while recording, because then I can't talk. I like just being able to chill. Problem is, like, with talking, is silence is not fun. It is not fun at all. Even on Discord. Like, I'll be on Discord calls. And, like, as soon if there's any silence at all, it's terrifying. Because, like, in real life, silence is, like, it's not as bad. It's still really awkward. But on Discord, it's like, you gotta hurry and find something, or they're gonna leave to find somewhere more interesting. I know, because I've done this as well, <laughs> but done that same thing. It's, it's hard. Silence, like, it's healthy, but also dead, like, we're, everyone's deathly afraid of it. <laughs> One thing I noticed I do a lot is, like, blame, like, joke blame other people for my problems. Like, actual people. Like, there's plenty of people I know who I'm good friends with. But I look at them and go, you did this to me. <laughs> like, I'm basic, like, like, the Radiohead songs, you know, that are, like, all anti-social, like, anthems, you know? Like, How to Disappear Completely or Subterranean Homesick Alien. Like, those are, like, my anthems, dude. Uh, Paranoid Android, not as much. Like, that one's j hatred. Whereas the, the other songs are more like... I don't know how to describe it. They're different songs. <laughs> I don't know. This should be the Radiohead, the video where I talk nerd about Radiohead. So I'm going to grab my phone just so I can, like, r jog my memory on their catalog. So I can geek about the entire thing for this episode. And then talk about my own problems. Because that's kind of the phase I've been going through. I obviously went through a Bo Burnham phase. If you've looked through my channel at all, you that's readily apparent that I had a Bo Burnham phase. <laughs> Just remaking all the songs. Where is my phone? What the heck? Is it not right? It's right here, goob. Alright. Uh, where's the phone case? I want to put that back on it. Um... 
gonna just like look at their catalog. Um, one thing I like to basically the way I get music on this in the first place, the only technically like legal songs I own is Arctic Monkeys AM album because the the album the vinyl I bought came with free like a link to get free MP3s, which is awesome. Why doesn't every album have that? That's so cool. I swear, if Radiohead's In Rainbows album, at least, doesn't have that, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I, I want, I would like that, please. <laughs> like, the best quality versions of it. Because right now, I my phone is like a Samsung, so it just has the option to, like, there's just a screen record, a button for screen record. If that would focus, that'd be great. I guess not, but there's literally a screen or a button to screen record your screen, so I'll just do that for YouTube videos of songs. Well, not the video, like just the the place you find the song on YouTube. I'll just screen record it. The only time I download, and let me rephrase that. There's this um web so, there's like websites that you can turn YouTube videos into MP3s. The only time I've done that was like two times recently because, and it was like classical music anyway. So I don't classical music's in the public domain, right? Like, right? Beet I can use I could use Beethoven in all my videos, and nothing would happen to me, right? <laughs> but yeah, I did it because there's these. Because the videos themselves had ads in them, and I can't screen record that, obviously. Uh, <laughs> unless I, like, got my dad's account, which pays for YouTube Premium, which I don't have. Uh, but if I do that, then for some reason, it puts all his contacts on my phone. And he has a lot of contacts, and I don't want that happening again. <laughs> uh, I just added 8-bit versions of all of Bo Burnham's inside to this. I have like some eight bit stuff. I have eight -bit, the eight bit versions of all of Led Zeppelin's Mothership album because that's cool. I like I like it. It's unique. It's interesting. S Artists Radiohead. I just listened to their Hail to the Thief album. Some of the song like a lot of songs require second listenings. Know that with music, if you're getting into music, there you're gonna have to re-listen. You're gonna probably be coming back to music a lot. Because you'll listen to it, think nothing of it, move on, and then be like, you'll, like, I have this urge a lot, like, I'll be like, oh, what was that album like again? Listen, like, I bet I'd like it now, I bet my taste has changed enough. And then listen to it again, and it is, like, the cool, the new coolest thing. That's what's happened a lot with Radiohead, like, the first time I listened to most of their catalog, I was like, this is all boring. And then I listened to it again, like, Subterranean and Homesick Alien is one of the two best examples of that. Like, that song was like, this is the most boring song I've ever heard. And then the second time I was like, this is the prettiest song I've ever heard. <laughs> um, the, in Hail to the Thief, the second song on it is called Sit Down, Stand Up. And it is, it has this beautiful, dramatic, slow burn. And then at the end, it just has this, the, like, the coolest buildup ever. It is so cool. <laughs> First time I listened to it, I was too busy reading comments to really notice it and all that. I wasn't really paying attention. Then I really listened to it this time. I was like, this is so dope. <laughs> but yeah, I'll just go through their like stuff in order, I guess. Pablo Honey. I haven't even listened to the whole thing of Pablo Honey. Why do I have two, two MP3s of Creep? Something's wrong with my files. I'm going to go through that while I talk about this. Try and fix that, because for some reason I have two of those. But, um, yeah, there's uh, Creep, and then I heard that um, Blowout was really good, so I listened to it, and it's pretty cool. It's got, like, this cool dramatic thing going on. I also have the acoustic version of both Creep and uh, Blowout, because they're also pretty good, and just different versions of the songs. I like different versions of songs sometimes. There's times, like, if it's a remix, I'm like, I don't care. That's just someone else's rendition of it. But if it's, like an acoustic version of a song, like One Republic or Ed Sheeran does that a lot, I go at it, that's cool. Maybe I'm feeling a little more mellow when I want to listen to Thing Out Loud, you know? like. <laughs> but the acoustic version of Creep is like the, uh, the best example. Why do I have a file called Whistle? That's weird. Anyway, 
it is like the peak version. It's the one used in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 at the start. And I own it because I have the vinyl of the soundtrack for that movie. Or two discs. It's technically a double album because it has a lot of songs in it. But that is like one of my favorite song radio, just songs in general. Like the acoustic version of Creep. It is so raw. It's super easy to play as well. Like I could play on my acoustic guitar. I have, I have two acoustic guitars. I just got a... a I was going to say vinyl string, but that's not what it's called at all. <laughs> um, nylon string, that's what it is. I, my first instrument was a steel string guitar, and then I got an electric guitar for my birthday. And now I just got a nylon string acoustic, which I re-recorded one of my songs with. But you won't hear it for probably ever, because unless you're like someone I know and I've showed you the song already. But one thing I want to do with it is get sound effects it wouldn't be super reproduced it's just to help the feel of it i want campfire sound effects and i want her l blizzard sound effects and luckily where i live i just have to wait for a blizzard which is very likely to happen where i live <laughs> so i just ha that one's just a waiting game hopefully <laughs> hopefully it's not like super uh, like ridiculous to try and get that sound effect because i literally only need it like a three minute recording of it um, and then campfire sound effects, which I need even less time, like, an even shorter recording of it. But, um, I want that for the song, because that would very much help the mood of it. But right now, it's just the raw acoustic version. It would probably also help, like, background noise, because there's a lot of, like, just... I record all my songs on my phone, <laughs> so there'd be a lot of just air <laughs> sound in it that would probably get blocked by having windy sound effects in it, so that would definitely help. Anyway. That's all I have to say about Pablo Honey. I've seen, like, the video... Actually, no, I've seen the video, like, just those clips of them doing this album live when, like, Tom York has the long blonde hair and he's just screaming into the camera like a retard. And it's painful. <laughs> it's painful to watch. And he's, like, not even screaming... Like, he's, if you've heard it, he's just like, he's just screaming. He's not singing good. He's just screaming for some reason. It's so weird. Anyways, The Bends. I need to re-listen to The Bends. That's one I really need to come back to. Because the only, the first songs I added were Fake Plastic Trees and My Iron Lung. Because those are good songs. One of the ones that are like my hot takes is like the ben, the song The Bends, which everyone thinks is like one of the songs that's like too happy. But the Benz, I recently just heard this guy describe the Benz as like the catchy uh, Radiohead album, which is definitely true. All the stuff in it is very catchy and fun to listen to, and the Benz is one of those. It's a very just fun song. <laughs> um, but yeah, I ended up coming back because of the to the song "Bulletproof." I wish I was, which has this beautiful chorus. That I can actually kind of sing. Should I try right now? No, I'm too tired. But yeah, that's all. I, I need to go back to that album, listen to more of the songs on it. What have I done? Go back. What's the third album they made? Oh, right. Okay, Computer. Seen as one of the best albums of all time. It's not. Uh, it's definitely got some stuff that, like, you would see and be like, oh my gosh, they definitely predict the future with this album. But, like, some of the songs in there are just boring. Like, they did that, but the songs themselves, some of them are kind of boring. Like, the last two songs, Lucky and the Tourist, are kind of boring and don't have that much going on for them. You know? This album definitely could have used some, like, reordering in it. How long has it been? 20 minutes. Okay. But, yeah, um... The, this album has some great stuff in it. It opens with Airbag, which is like one of my favorite songs ever now. Just, I love Airbag. It's so, like, happy. Like, there's that tone that you realize in the rest of the album that the song has of, like, people rely on technology too much because he was saved by an airbag. <laughs> His life was saved by one. But also just... The message of it is super cool. In an interstellar bird.
Forest. I'm back to save the universe. It's super pretentious, and I love it. That like, if can you imagine saying that to someone else? Like, I'm back to save the universe. Like, what are you? Who do you think you are? I love it. I love it. <laughs> so pretentious and then it's immediately followed by paranoid android which can i just say that like middle section of the song the doon 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 is fantastic and they don't use it enough <laughs> you could have shortened the like rain down from above part just a little bit and given that middle section more time to shine because it absolutely should have i don't know like i kind of flop back now like that's what i thought the first time like that ends too soon, but now I'm like, eh, it gets its point across. <laughs> yeah, that song ends, and it's immediately followed by Subterranean Homesick Alien, which has the prettiest, like, just waning guitar, like, crying guitars going on throughout the whole thing, and it's super nice. Like, it sounds like you're, like, a montage of flying around in a spaceship over a town. That's what it sounds like. It's so nice. Um... Exit music for a film. I love this song. If you don't know, this song is about, like, it's just their take on the Romeo and Juliet story. And it's so dramatic and awesome! It just, it's so cool. <laughs> One thing I've noticed with Radiohead as well, I don't have any of their albums yet, physically. So I don't know if these songs are, like, how they're laid out on vinyl. Like... Because I was watching this one dude react to... I didn't finish it. I, like, watched a bit of it. But it was just someone reacting to their Kid A album. And they... I realized there's a chance that the album was a double album. But there's definitely not enough songs in it. Here's the thing. is I know that a vinyl can fit 23 minutes of music on it. I know because the Pink Floyd song Echoes goes on one side and it's 23 minutes. So... If an, and Radiohead's Kid A is definitely not an hour and 20 minutes long. That would be how much music you need to justify having it all in a double album. <laughs> and K OK Computer definitely isn't either. But it's also, I'm pretty sure it's too long. I'm pretty sure it's too long to fit on a single disc. So does that mean they're just wasting a ton of disc space? There's just tons of empty space on a disc? Because that's awful. Fill up your discs, buddy. If you're going to make an album, fill it up. Or cut down a bit. If Cutting down probably would have been the right choice here. Like The Tourist and Lucky. Or just make some of the songs just a little shorter. Like, just make them more to the point, you know? <laughs> oh. Just, yeah, Electioneering, you probably could have gotten rid of Electioneering. It's a fun song and all, but yeah, there's a few songs you could have gotten rid of, like Lucky and Electioneering, and it probably would have freed it up a bunch. But yeah, Exit Music for a film. Back to that. Um, it's awesome, dramatic, and I'm a sucker for love songs, so yeah. Someone laughing. Anyway. The next song, Let Down. Let Down is Subterranean, Homesick Alien, and Let Down are... Let Down's the second one where I was like, the first time I listened to it, I was like, this is the boring, most boring song ever. And then the second time when I got depressed and listened to it, I was like, this is beautiful and super whiny. <laughs> the lyrics are so whiny, but it's like perfectly done. It's done so well that it's super whiny, but catchy whiny. Yeah. And it, like, gives me, like, like, I listened to, I was listening to it and was like, this gives me, like, like, it kind of reminds me of, like, something, it just makes me think of the 90s, for some reason. Like, it just does. I don't know how to describe it. Like, some, for some reason, it makes me think of a 90s beach party. Something like that. I don't know. Karma Police was one of the disappointing ones I heard, and then listened to it again. The ending instrumental thing, the, like, Wayne's, that happen are super nice and the like message like that how it closed off with i lost myself is super funny <laughs> i like or just cool i like it sweet kind of um and then this is where it starts like utilizing that the fact that it's a vinyl and the songs can be connected that's something i should have touched on 
in the last in the last episode of it. No, I'll touch on it now. But yeah, Car- Karma Police kind of like does this weird collapse at the end, straight into Fitter Happier, which is kind of just a weird transition song. But it's basically just an AI voice describing like what the like ideal human being state is now. Fitter, happier, more productive. I don't know the exact lyrics, but it ends with the iconic line, a pig in a cage on antibiotics. <laughs> it's hilarious. And I don't think it does, but it might transition directly into electioneering. So that's cool. It might. I don't have the album. I don't know. But anyway, I'll keep go- touching on about that. Led Zeppelin 3 utilizes that. And it's really cool. The connection of two songs. If you listen to Led Zeppelin 3, the first song, it starts off with Immigrant Song, and then the second song, Friends, great song by the way, very cool and dramatic, kind of has this wany synth going on. And you, you don't really notice it throughout the song, but by the end of it, all the other instruments drop out, so you have to notice it. And then I didn't, and then it just kind of ends. If you're listening to it on YouTube, at least, it just kind of ends with that, and it's kind of jarring. And then I noticed, when listening to the album, that the song right after it, Celebration Day, has the waning sound effect at the start of it. Like, I listened to the vinyl, the song ended, and the waning was going, and then Celebration Day just starts playing with the waning still going. Like, that's awesome! Those songs are connected! It's the simplest, stupidest thing, but I find it so cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I just find it really cool. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things that do that. Like, Queen's second album does that all. Like, all the songs are semi... Most of the songs in it are semi-connected, I think. But Queen 2 is kind of a lame album. I wanted to add all the songs, and later was like, no, nah, these all suck. <laughs> they're they're like okay, but also I don't want them. <laughs> They've got like two nice moments in each song, like one cool kind of cool moment in each song, but they're all too long for it to justify itself. <laughs> anyway, um, electioneering is just a very in- energetic. It's it starts off really cool, like it has this dramatic like. Just very, like, over-the-top guitar. I don't know how to describe it. Like, garbage can guitar. That's how I describe it. The Like, the guitar sounds like it has a garbage can filter over it. Garbage can echoey filter. I know how to make the sound on my guitar, electric guitar. There's just a little switch on the bottom. You just... And then it sounds like that. It's not a hard sound. It, just give it some echo, and then it'll sound exactly like it does in electioneering. But it's just kind of cool. It sounds cool. And that's friends. I'm thinking the wrong song, but yeah. Um, climbing up the walls. That's a cool, funny juxtaposition. You go electioneering straight to the like the scariest sounding song in the album. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just about like insane people and like people who are in insane asylums and stuff like that. Like just insaneness, I guess. Oh. I don't know the exact deets of it, the details. But yeah, it sounds super cool. He lets out this insane, terrifying scream at the very end of it. This is the one that sounds like... This one has, like, garbage can drums in it. The drums sound like garbage cans. It's awesome. Um, no surpri- Immediately followed by, like, the sweetest song on the album, No Surprises, which is a song about suicide. And I sing it way too much. I'm not going to kill myself, don't worry. I just like to scare people. <laughs> uh, um, so I'll sing the song to myself way too much, especially the like the line that shows you that's a song about suicide. Like the, I'll take a quiet life, a handshake with carbon monoxide, with no alarm. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... And then Lucky, which I was listening to on a drive. I was listening to this album on, while I was driving the other day. Lucky has like this one cool part. I can't remember. It was just like a very simple, quiet but cool riff or something that was going on. I really liked it. The tourist 
tourist is just like I. That's when I that drive when I was listening to the tourist. That was when I noticed what people had said about where it's like all. It feels like you've been in this very tight space, and then the tourist you just like all the walls disappear, and it's all super open. You know, that's kind of what it, like you were. Like, it feels like the opposite of claustrophobic, you know? <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, moving on from OK Computer, we've got Kid A, the cool... This is the cool Radiohead album. The weird one. 30 minutes in? Perfect. Everything in its right place. People say it's like the turn. The biggest left turn in music, whatever. Uh... Eh. People messed with synth syn synthesizers exist before the is it ex uh, existed before this. Like people have been messing with those forever. Led Zeppelin's last real album, In Through the Outdoor, the second disc. I don't I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the second disc. What is wrong with me? Second side, it's only one disc. Second side opens with Carousel Ombra, which is basically just a synthesizer epic about. Uh, Robert Plant flipping the other bandmates the bird because they weren't at his son's funeral or whatever. I might be wrong, but it's, that's the gist of it. <laughs> it's all in like a uh, cool Led Zeppelin style Lord of the Rings uh, vague lyrics, so it doesn't matter. But um, <laughs> that that song kind of introduces them playing with synthesizers, and then. The next song, the next two songs are the ones that really like. When you hear it, you're like, dude, they could have gone so many places if they'd used synthesizers more. The song "All My Love," like, can you imagine if they kept going with this? If they had played with synthesizers and like gone the punk direction more, how cool would that have been? How cool? Lost them too soon. I guess that's what radio Radiohead was for. Uh, started off very punky, started playing with synths as they went along, and kind of, they're just the next Led Zeppelin. Radiohead were the next Led Zeppelin, I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah, everything in its right place. Oh, yeah, um, let me finish then through the outdoor thought. Um, the last song has the prettiest use of synthesizers ever. That beginning part of I'm Gonna Crawl is to die for. It is so pretty. For a very pretty song, and it is so good. Also, synth also, uh, also synthesizers create a very good wall of sound in that song. Like, if you listen to that song and like pay attention to the synths throughout it, like you notice they are like holding the wall of sound up, keeping the dead air out. Like they're doing a lot of heavy lifting in that song. So it's also the solo in "All My Love Is to Die For." <laughs> It's just super cool. Anyway, everything in its right place. This is one of those ones that I realized I can't listen to music with my mom anymore because the song started playing and she was like, now I get why you're so depressed because this is the most annoying song ever. <laughs> yeah, so can't do... Uh, I don't like listening to music with her anymore because I like the song, fun songs, but I also like depressing songs. So if you're going to hold those back... Then what, what am I supposed to listen to? It's not even just depressing songs. Just songs that aren't, like, immediately fun 80s pop hits. She doesn't like, like, Black Sabbath. If I start playing Black Sabbath, she's gonna get all edgy, iffy with it. Like, come on, this is... Be educated like me in music. <laughs> Whatever, I have a brother who's cool and I can listen to it with him. He likes my. He likes it. I'm getting him. I'm getting him into my tastes of Radiohead and Black Sabbath, and Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin not as much, but yeah, Arctic Monkeys. He likes Arctic Monkeys, so that's a start. But yeah, everything in the right place. This is a cool song because it's like it shows you don't need to have complex lyrics. <laughs> Kid A is a good example of like anyone can make good music. Like you do not need complex lyric. Like to spend that long on creating, like, the best lyric, like, hallelujah-level lyric poetry, you know? <laughs> you can just say the same thing over and over again to a beat, and as long as uh, you do it right, just in a good enough way, people will love it and praise it for decades. Kid A, I want this album as well, because I've heard a lot of the songs, like, transition really well into each other, and I think I know where it transitions. 
but also I still want the album so I can hear it for myself because I'm sure some of it's really cool. I don't think everything in Tribe Place and Kid A transition to each other. Maybe they do, but it's like very subtle and not worth any attention. But yeah, Kid A is just a super nice falling asleep. I've heard someone say that OK Computer is like preparing you for Kid A, which actually it is because that song's about that that album is about like like prophesying the apocalypse, and then Kid A is you're living in the apocalypse. Like, listen to the albums, like, OK Computer is a warning about it, like, oh no, everything's going to crap, what are we going to do? And then Kid A is like, you know what, everything sucks, but eh, it might be okay, we'll see, we'll survive through it, we might survive through it, you know? Like, the apocalypse is happening in Kid A. If you look at the album covers, that's kind of... The, just the pictures, which can I just say Kid A has, like, the coolest album cover ever. <laughs> it's just so cool. Um, yeah. Kid A is just super nice. Basically, OK Computer's Fitter Happier is, like, preparing you for the weird digitized vocals. Like, weird, not digitized, but, like, baby-sounding vocals in that. Like, because the 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 term Kid A is basically what Radiohead thought the first cl human clone would be named. That's kind of the whole point of it. Like, there's that like apocalypticness coming into play, and it definitely sounds like that. I don't like. This is the only song where I don't like the just jumbled, random bullcrap lyrics. Like, it would have been cool. Like, you don't even have to try that hard. Just make the lyrics be like. Someone exper a kid experiencing like make it sound like this adult who's experiencing simple pleasures of life for the first time, you know, something along those lines. That's kind of what it implies. Like, there's like one line that implies that, but it's like it just goes in all these weird directions. Like, just do that. That would have been really cool concept. Would have elevated the song to like a more memorable state. And then that song transitions directly into the national anthem. There's just this little, like, bounce that happens at the end of Kid A, and then the national anthem's bass kicks in. Like, it's super... That's I want to hear that on a vinyl. That'll be super cool. But... But yeah. National anthem is, like, the fir one of the first, like, really cool... Like, that's one of the first songs you listen, and you're like, Radiohead is, like, the cool, one of the, is definitely, like, they can make fun songs. Because that bass line is awesome, and the way the jazz, like, the jazzy orchestra comes in and starts falling apart is really cool. And the way it ends all dramatic, like, you, if you don't listen to these songs, I sound like a madman. But if you have heard these songs before, you'll get it. I hope. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, definitely go listen to all this if you haven't already. Uh, and then National Anthem, like, quiets, calms down when it's over. And then one of my favorite Radiohead songs, definite favorites, comes in. How to Disappear Completely. I love this song. It is basically, like, people say all I need is, like, the evolution, is the, like, better creep. This is the better creep. It's not about the same thing, I guess. I guess technically all I need is literally about the same thing as Creep, just said in a better way. How to Disappear Completely is just a better depressing song in general. <laughs> Those synths are so good. I want to create, like, covers of songs. Like, I, I love doing covers of songs. I want to do one that's a duet. Like, I want to find a girl who... Oh, if I ever talk to anyone again, if I can ever successfully talk to a girl I was swallowing uh, right there I want to find someone who can sing well and then do a bunch of covers of songs you just like using the female voice to elevate them you know because the female voice can be used very well the funny thing with I found with the female voice is like if you're just if a girl's just singing a song that already exists like Somebody to Love by Queen, then it's not special, because everyone knows a girl can sing really well. Like, that's the whole point. Like, everyone knows girls can sing. The 
what makes some Queen songs special is that Freddie Mercury is a dude who can reach those lows and highs. That's what makes it special. So when a girl does it, it's like, yeah, well, obviously you can do that. Everyone knows that. <laughs> obviously girls can hit high points. That's, like, their whole thing. <laughs> but, um, like, I would want to use those in covers of songs to really, like, just to have fun with it, you know? Use it in ways that, like, actually plays to its strengths, you know? And make it necessary strengths. Like, in the Pink Floyd song, Mother, I would have, I want, I would, like, have a girl sing the chorus part, you know, the part where the, m from the perspective of the mother, obviously. That's not very complicated, but I just think it'd be sweet and cool. Uh, how to disappear completely, I would want to experiment having a girl mimic, just vocalize. It'd basically be like if you combine this song with Pink Floyd's, um, the one, the Screamy song, uh, Great Gig in the Sky. <laughs> it'd basically like com be like combining those, but having a girl just like, kind of calmly, <sighs> Just mimic what the the like waning guitar crying guitar does in that this song would be super cool. And then at the end, it gets all distorted, like I'll digitally mess with her voice, make it all distorted and scary, because that's how it gets at the end of the song. But that would be so cool. This song is just so pretty. I listened to it the first time I listened to it. It was like this is boring, and then like the next day I listened to it, it was like this is beautiful. This is like the most beautiful, the beautifulestest song I've ever heard. And then it's followed by Tree Fingers, which is boring. It's sweet and all. Like, you get what they were going for. Like, you could listen to this while just... I went on a walk. I listened to the whole thing. It was like perfect weather for this kind of song. <laughs> with song with air quotes. It's just like, kind of like a drone. Like, a, like you could... This would be the soundtrack for just nature. Like, fall, weather, nature, sound, music, kinda. Just just a slow drone to listen to, what, to go to sleep to. That's kinda what this is. It's weird. It's weird. But it's, it's like, it's weak, it's weak, but it's still worth it. Um, optimistic. That one's fun. It's definitely fun. My brain's starting to die at this point. It's 42 minutes in. Okay. Um, yeah, that one's fun. I read a comment on that song that basically, it was like, just saying a, what, another, because Tom York, a lot of singers, like, it's hard to understand, like, was it with rock artists, and just not being able to say, understand anything they say, like, l looking up lyrics is like a must-do, because I cannot understand half the crap singer any singers say. Probably doesn't help that they're all British, so it, <laughs> that's probably hindering the clearness of their vocals a bit but if you listen to optimistic you could you, the lyrics for the chorus are you can try the best you can you can try the best you can the best you can is good enough but a comment was saying another way you could hear it is you can try domestic ham you can try domestic ham domestic ham is good enough and it's it was, and now i can't unhear that ever like that's a must do when when listening to sing along with it for me and then it's followed by in limbo which is really cool that's another the second time they play with like a song just completely falling apart at the end because at the end, like, all the lyrics just kind of, like, go at it, whack, like, kind of spiral out into the aether. At least that's what it sounds like. And it's very cool. I like how at the start, when all the when the lyrics, like, half kick in, you can just hear all these, like, mumblings going on. I always try and sing along with it, but I don't know what they're saying. So you can't... <laughs> the lyrics sound like they're in this limbo. <laughs> then Idiotique, or Idiotech is such a cool song. It's so cool. This is like one of the peaks of like them experimenting because it like has drum machine. This is another case of like when people say it's like the greatest reinvention ever. Like drum machines have existed forever. They were used in Queen's Hot Space. Like those are nothing special. What are you talking about? <laughs> and, like, they messed with... They already did the, like, messing with lyrics to make them sound all weird and robotic in di and, like, out of order in everything in its right place. 
so it's like, and obviously that makes, like, it's still cool. I'm not trying to, like, take the song down, but it's like people say it's like the great, like, this album does so many great things, like, yeah, it does, but also, like, you're, you're going way too far with it, buddy. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's not the second coming. Chill out. <laughs> it's just a cool idea. I have those all the time. <laughs> I mean, I, big talk coming from me, this is like, I probably wouldn't come up with, I'd probably never come up with this, but it's still cool. Um, and then this is the second, like, obvious cool transition, album transition thing, but um, you'd listen to the song to the end of Videotech, and then there's this drone, this, like, horrifying, like, weird instrumental that goes on, and that's in the start of um, Morning Bell, which has, like, the coolest, some of the funnest drum use in Radiohead songs, like, I'm probably doing it wrong, but, like, it just has those cool little spaz outs throughout the song, and it's really cool. I, I think of In Limbo, uh, no, Morning Bell, as, like, the culmination of everything like, it's using everything that the album has already established and putting it into one song. That's what I think of Morning Bell as. Anyway, and then the album closes with Motion Picture Soundtrack, which is, like, the most depressing song. This is the second suicide song in the, like, song that's probably directly about suicide. Like, with the line, I will see you in the next life. Obviously. Um, also, the second time they use weird movie-related titles in their songs, like exit music for a film. Um, and then there's a hidden track, so I assume when you're listening to the album, you finish motion picture soundtrack, The Needle Would Travel Down, and then there'd just be the short little instrumental... It's just called Untitled, on like, on the listing thing. But yeah, the song is just called Untitled. Not called Untitled, it's just an untitled song. It's just a little, like, like it's the soundtrack for a sunrise, basically. Like, it's like 30 seconds long. I think it's like a minute, just under a minute, actually. But yeah, it's just this cute little instrumental... What was that? Anyway... Yeah, and then it closes off the song, the album. Yada yada yada. My brain is fried at this point. Hail to the thief. This has the best opener for a radio for like m any album ever, bar none. Two plus two equals five. It's so cool. I love this song. It's just explosive. It's got some great melodies. I don't know, it's just a cool song. And then, I like how they kind of do the same thing twice at the start of this album, because the 2 plus 2 equals 5 is immediately followed by Sit Down, Stand Up, which I think I already talked about at this point, but like, the cool, it's just a slower version of 2 plus 2 equals 5, and it has this amazing build-up. The raindrops, the raindrops. But yeah, this is one of the ones I had, to, like, most of the album for this, like, there were three songs I heard that I actually, like, liked, but, like, each... I had to listen to it again for each song that I added, if that makes sense. So, like, I added 2 plus 2 equals 5 the first time. Then I listened to it again and added There, There, and, um... Go to Sleep. Go to Sleep is basically, like, their Led Zeppelin song. Like, it's... like It's like a new era Led Zeppelin song, it sounds like. It's so cool. Um... But, yeah, a lot of the songs on this, like, at first, they're kind of boring, and they kind of are, but, like, at a certain point, that's what's so great about Radiohead, is they're calm. Yeah. I don't really have much more to say about this album. It's just cool. You have to listen to it for yourself. <sighs> what was next? Oh, I didn't even talk about Amnesiac. That was... Amnesiac is basically just the album that came out right after... Um... Kid A, and it's just, it's basically Kid A outtakes, all the songs that wouldn't fit on Kid A, so they just put them as their own, on um, their own thing. Packed Like Sardines and Crushed in Box is, you wouldn't think it, but it's 
got a cool beat. Like, at first it seems anno like it's just going to be annoying, but the short, simple rhythm they used in it, like, just the way the lyrics are sung is so good. I'm a reasonable man, get off my case, get off my case. But yeah, I Might Be Wrong is, like, the sequel to, um, just the, the, the sequel to, um, uh, National Anthem. It's got a sick guitar riff. Do, 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 just a guitar solo, basically, just a slow guitar solo in a two-minute song. Life in a Glass House. That is, like, what people point to saying this album is good, actually. It's not just outtakes. Life in a Glass House is such a good climax. It's so good. I don't know how to describe it, but it's got, like, saxophone in it. They brought someone in to play that. It's so jazzy and fun. And the the ending lyrics at the end, like the climactic lyrics, only, only, only. Uh, but yeah, it's so good. Anyway, now for the one everyone loves, in rainbows, which a lot of people see as perfect. I don't know about perfect. It's got some weaker songs on it. Eh, I don't know. I like them more. Just not, I mean, it's got some of the, like, you have to re-listen them to really appreciate them songs. But a lot of them are really good. Really good. 15 Step, here's how I see 15 Step. It is based, the culmination, everything that was in Kid A is somewhere in 15 Step, I think. Like, just everything about that album is condensed into 15 Step. That's how I see it as an album. Body Snatchers. What a, like, great kick-off. I love it. The lyrics are fun. The guitars are muddy and fun, which show, and show, like, you can, your instruments could sound like anything, and the, the song can still be good because of it. <laughs> so good. Nude is the song everyone sees as, like, the perfect, def the perfect Radiohead song, which I get. I don't, I can't really deny that it's a great song I love it uh, I don't really know what more to say about nude um did I say nude did I say a different song before hopefully I haven't been doing that this whole time but yeah um how long has it been 53 minutes forever. but yeah it's great I end up finding myself singing the lyrics Oh my gosh, the funniest thing happened while I was listening. I was, like, driving to church, and this song came on, right, as I was get, p pulling into the parking lot. I saw this girl that I liked. Uh, as I was pulling in, she was just walking by, like, on the sidewalk. And the lyrics, Don't get any big ideas. They're not gonna happen. We're playing right then. Like, screw you, okay? Because, like, if I believe in God, it's mostly because of my music. I don't know why I phrased it like that. I believe in God, and it's mostly because of the times that music has been timed perfectly. Because it is beyond reality, the way that it's time been timed in my life, sometimes. And that was one of the moments I'm like, you know what? You're a jerk. Come on. That's, that's just mean. Come on. This is, you're a jerk. <laughs> and then, yeah. Weird Fishes. Ar arpeggi. Is that what it's supposed to say? Arpeggi? Weird, but whatever. Uh, it's a cool song. I like the rhythm on it. I like it. I don't have a huge emotional connection to it. Like I do a lot of the other songs. But it's still a good song. Good love song. All I Need. The Evolution of Creep. The If Creep was written by a mature adult. Some people say. And it has it has great 
why is there why is there why is my computer like humming so annoyingly whatever ringing that's what the word i'm looking for is but yeah it's got these great deep doom 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 since since going on the lyrics are soft yeah and then what's the next song these next two songs are the ones like the weaker songs on the album but they're still pretty good faustarp is just a short little it's like less than it's like two minutes ten seconds that's really short but yeah it's just a little cute little acoustic thing with weird almost rap like like soft rap if that's even a thing like lyrics and then some like violins going on in the background like it's it's like weirdly overproduced i listened to a version that was just, well, i was watching like this documentary video on it's a video it was a really cool watch but it's the video was called um radiohead a job that slowly kills you like an hour-long documentary on radiohead basically and there was a clip showing them the one the band member york and one of the other band members i don't know their names by heart uh he was just playing acoustic guitar and that was like the only instrument they had just the guitar and the lyrics and it was i prefer if that was the version they had for this album sometimes simple is better um it's kind of the only thing that kind of weakens this song for me um but yeah i still don't know what the song is even about I should probably look up the lyrics and like try and see what other people say about it, because it sounds like it's about something cool, but I wouldn't know, because I'm too dumb to understand it. Reckoner. That one, I had to listen to four times in a row to get it, like, while trying to add it to my collection. The I had to listen to it four times in a row. It's been a while. I don't hate it anymore, but I was like, I don't want to hear the song for, like, a month <laughs> after adding it, because... Uh, you should never listen to a song four times in a row. That'll kill it <laughs> for you. Two times, maybe. Like, really get the intricacies of it. But, like, four? Don't do that. <laughs> it's got really... The drums on it get really repetitive after a while. Or, like, the, just the percussion, whatever the heck it is on this song. The lyrics are beautiful in it. And then when all the instruments drop out and it's just the lyrics... Like, the, the, I don't know what the exact lyrics are, but, like, just the part where it goes quiet and the lyrics are alone is so cool. It's so cool. House of Cards. I was going to talk about social life in this and messed up. Anyway, and now I'm just praising Radiohead. Anyway, House of Cards. I connect to House of Cards way too much, man. If you don't know, it's about being in love with someone who's taken already. Which I had. I went to like an FSY thing. And one of the girls already had a boyfriend. And I like really flippin' liked them. So like I found out about this song. Like a month after that. And then remembered them and was like. Just like sobbing in my pillow. Like gosh dang man. That hurts. <laughs> but yeah it's just. Oh my gosh the drums and the guitar on it. I learned how to play it on guitar so. That's fun. It's super easy to play. Um, but dang, man. It, it's so simple, yet so soul-crushing. <laughs> Jigsaw falling into place. My top one favorite Radiohead song. This is in my top favorites of all time. Like, out of the few songs that are up there, this is in there. For sure. <laughs> Jigsaw falling into place. It's so cool. From what I know, from what I've assumed, I haven't Googled the lyrics, I just came up with my own. It's pretty self explanatory. Like, all the thing, like, you're at a, you and this girl are at a party, and all the things just keep, fa all these things just keep happening to get you two together. Like, either you're, you've got it all, I don't know if it's like the dude's got it all planned out to make the girl fall in love with him, or if God's just like having everything fall into place, Jigsaw falling into place, but they, like, eventually, like, I don't think I have to keep going with it, it's just so cool, such a cool idea, such a good song, and it made me realize, on my, when I make my masterpiece album, I need a song that, like, is a combination of both Jigsaw falling into place and, um, Gallows Pole by Led Zeppelin, where it starts off with this 
catchy acoustic riff, get some good drum rhythm in as it like as all the instruments slowly get introduced, have a really cool concept build up kind of concept like that. I gotta have something like that, man. Um, and then the song, the album ends with videotape, which I don't personally connect with. It's cool. It's pretty sad, but for me, it's personally whatever. Anyway, the next album, King of Limbs. Here's the thing: is I like the King of Limbs, but only there's a version called the from the basement version, which is just like them playing it live from some cert, uh, from basement studio. And if you don't like the songs already, then you probably won't like them still. I've had to listen to them a few times to really like it, but some of the songs, like, there's little bits, it made the little parts that count, and some of the songs do it really well. Um, Bloom, that's, like, the favorite for a lot of people, personally. It's one of the mid ones for me. Like, people like the way it just, like, the layers keep adding up. For me, that's one of the weak parts of it. The Daily Mail is a really cool addition in From the Basement. So the normal version of the album only has like eight songs. But the From the Basement version adds a few songs. And they're like some of the best ones from it. The Daily Mail is the one song that deviates from what all the other songs do. Because they all have like repetitive rhythms that go on for like five minutes. Four to five minutes. Whereas the Daily Mail is just a little piano ballad that builds up into this big orchestra. And it's really cool and dramatic little by little has like the best lyrics in the entire album like just i don't know what the lyrics are but it's like like it's just kind of dramatic and i love it the riff is also pretty good the riff on all of them is pretty good each one has like its unique bits i like just the lyrics in that song are really nice codex is really nice to fall asleep to and Give Up the Ghost is the same way. Um, Give Up the Ghost is like acoustic, but like purely acoustic with like looped lyrics. And then Codex is just a little piano ballad. And there's not really much to say about them. They're good to fall asleep to because I've done it before. And that's about it. And honestly, boring songs are the perfect ones to fall asleep to because like there's not much to really get out of them already. Like, I guess it forces you to listen to lyrics more, but also, like, if it's really boring, like, you don't want to fall asleep to, you can't fall asleep to something that's, like, pretty but energetic, like, um, uh, videotape or no surprises, because it's just too, like, there's too much going on, like, it's, it's too catchy, like, if it's too catchy, then you're just gonna sing along to it and you'll never fall asleep, um, but, like, if it's boring, then that's perfect. Um, Feral, Feral, and uh, Morning Mr. Magpie, I think, are the two that are like the the heaviest songs. And that's not saying much. Like they're like they don't get that heavy, but like they've got like rough guitar riffs, like like garbage can guitars going on <laughs> in them, and that's really cool. I like it. Um, Feral, I'm, I'll have to listen to it again, but I remember, like, listing, why is that? That's not right. I have something listed wrong on this, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's, he's just making random noise <laughs> in the, on the album, like, on the song. He's just, like, the, the, Tommy York is just, like, making random animal noises or something, like, gargling or something as... He as the song goes, which would make sense. Feral, separator. What is separator again? I'm not gonna listen to it. I forgot about. It. Lotus flower is the fan favorite. Like, is like the one everyone knows is like the best song on the album. And it ha it does it's definitely I'd I'd say it's worthy of that. It's got the pretty it's got the most that happens in it, and it's got the prettiest like vocals during like the chorus. And that's all I have to say for it. <laughs> Staircase, don't remember much about it. Uh, the last song on the From the Basement version, the one of the ones that was added, Super Collider, has a really cool riff and some really cool lyrics to go with it. Like, it's just got a very... I don't know how to describe it. It's just cool. Super Collider. 
But yeah, now we're moving on to the end of Radiohead. A moon-shaped pool is a good album to fall asleep to. Not the first half, like from Burn the Witch to Full Stop. But um, after the second half, perfect to fall asleep to. Because it's boring. Uh, I'm gonna sneeze, I'm gonna sneeze, and it's gone. Gosh dang it. Burn the Witch. This song, this song just has beautiful lyrics throughout the whole thing. Burn the Witch's chorus is lovely. Just... So good, so good. Daydreaming is boring. I like it, but it's very boring. It's basic. It it might as well be like one of the 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 calmer sleep songs in uh, King of Limbs. Dex Dark is really what is Dex Dark again? I think it's just one of the ones where it's like just the boring rhythm ones. Because uh, a lot of all these songs have like great rhythms, but some of them that's like all they have. <laughs> Uh, Desert Island Disc is like a cool little, like, you could listen to it while sleeping at a beach while tanning. Like, it's super tropical and nice. Full stop. This is like the second, like, wherever, um, Jigsaw Falling the Place lands on my favorites list, full stop is right behind it. It is so cool. That haunting bass line as it builds up. is so cool. You really messed up everything. And then the rising tension of the, like, the repeated, like, the chorusy bit, like, the middle section of the song. Truth will mess you up. Truth will mess you up. Where he just keeps repeating that is super lovely as well. And then, that's all I really have to say for it. I just love it. It's super nice. Um, Glass Eyes. Don't have much to say about it. Glass Eyes, Identicate, The Numbers, and Present Tense, and the the song with the really long name, Tinker, Taylor, Soldier, Rich Man, Poor Man, Beggar Man, Thief, are all boring in the sense like they're good songs, but they're the boring kind you can fall asleep to real easily. And then True Love Waits, the saddest, most depressing Radiohead song about like a relationship ending. I don't have much to say about it. I find the piano just a little too fast. Like, it just too much going on with the piano at once, I find. But the lyrics are great. And the way they're sung. And then, let's go to the out, like, the singles and stuff. Spectre? If you don't know about Spectre, basically, Radiohead made a James Bond song for the, the movie Spectre, which ended up being whatever but the song is like beautiful <laughs> it's so good and it didn't get picked for some reason because it wasn't like poppy enough or whatever come on it's so dumb do you know how many you could have gotten so many people into radiohead with that like with that movie maybe i don't know but it would have been so cool such a good song and then ill wind is one I just found. It's got a great rhythm. That's all I have to say for it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's all I got to say about Radiohead. <sighs> should probably close this off. I've been recording for an hour and ten minutes now. Hour and nine minutes, thirty seconds. And I'm gonna turn it off now. Goodbye.